presentation we will take a look at a problem where there is a liquidation of a partnership and within that liquidation one partner is going to end up with a negative capital count and have to pay the partnership within the process of the liquidation process so first thing we're going to start off with is to have a uh, ratio and change this kind of ratio format to a percentage format uh, this is often going to be seen in problems where we have this three two one or some type of setup like this to show the profit sharing one reason being that it helps to have a ratio in case some of the percentages aren't exact so the way to deal with this is we're just going to take out the calculator and we're going to say that we have three plus two plus one gives us six so we're going to take the three over six and that's 50 percent for our first capital account and then our second capital account is two over six or 0.3333 for our second capital account and then one over six for the third capital account so the, we'll do that again with formulas here we're going to say that this equals uh, three over six fifty percent this equals two over six or 0.333 note that this really goes on forever it's 0.3333 on forever here even though we can only see the two decimal places on this uh, format. This is important to note because when we use this cell in a formula, then it will uh, pull the actual number, one-third, rather than just 0.33. Next, we'll do the same for M. So we're going to say this equals 1 over uh, 6, it was, <laughs> it's 0.17. And then if we add these up, of course, it sums up to 1 or 100%. So then we're going to use this information to work the rest of the problem. Now these are going to be the kind of our trial balance. We have 182.5 of cash. We got 530,000 of inventory, our assets. That's going to be the only asset we'll deal with here. And then we've got the accounts payable, 240,000 and the capital accounts. So we know the, the assets equal the liabilities plus equity or this plus this is 712.5 and these are 712.5. So now we're going to use this information in order to liquidate the partnership in our sequence. First selling the assets, then paying off the liabilities, then paying the uh, capital accounts paying the partners. We must do it in that order or we really should do it in that order because if we don't, then we could end up in a problem where the capital accounts end up with a negative balance. And even still with doing this process, as in this problem, <laughs> we'll have a negative balance. And we want to avoid that as much as possible because that will result in arguments in the partnership most likely within the liquidation process. So to, to avoid that as much as possible, we're going to sell the inventory first, get all the cash that we can, pay off the liabilities, then pay the partners. So that's the first step. We're going to sell the inventory. Now we're going to say we sold it for 320000 in this problem. So we had it on the books for 530000 We're going to sell it for 320. Thousand. Then we'll take the inventory off the books for what it's on the books for because we're sold the entire amount, 530,000. And then we have a difference. If we highlight these two, the 530 minus the 320 gives us the $210 difference, which we're then going to have to allocate to the partners in accordance with their partnership agreement, their 50, 33, and 17 split. So to do that in a calculator, we would say that we have the 320,000 minus the 530,000 gives us 210 times for K, 0.5, 50% times their percentage, 105. Same thing if we took the 210 times the percentage for, for uh, C, it would be 0.33, but note that's pretty low because it's actually gonna be 0.3333 on forever. If we use this cell, it'll actually not come out to this number it'll come out to 70,000. And to see that, uh, just to see how that rounding can kind of throw us off sometimes, if it was uh, 210,000 times 0.3333333, it's pretty close. If we took the ratio of 210,000 times one third or divided by three, then we get that 70,000. That's what will show up even though we only see 0.333 here once we use the formula. So let's do that now. Let's just do this with a with the formulas here. What we're going to do is is add these up because they're a subtraction problem because this one's negative and that's positive. So if we say this number plus this number, it's going to say this number plus the negative, which is a subtraction. 
So we can just say equals sum of these two, which will actually be a subtraction problem because this is a negative number, brackets times the 50% and enter. So all we did was just uh, add those two up, which is a negative, which makes a subtraction problem so that 210 times 50%. So we'll do that here again. We're gonna say this equals the sum. Double click the sum function, highlight those two numbers, which will actually be a subtraction problem. Close the brackets, times, then that 0.33, which is really one third, or two sixths, same thing, 70,000. So then we'll do this again. We'll say equals the sum, uh, brackets, and we'll highlight these two. Close the brackets times this uh, 0.17, giving us the 35,000. So that's going to be our allocation. Of course, if we add these up, we've got the 210, which is a, a equal to our loss of 210. So now we'll bring the balances down. So we're just going to add these up. We're going to bring the balances down. So we're in cash. We're just going to say equals the sum of these two numbers, bringing the balance down inventory and we could just copy that across that formula but i'm going to do it each way each time so we can emphasize what we're doing here um, both from a excel standpoint and just mathematically as well as uh, theory why we're doing it so the inventory was here it's going down to zero because we sold it all the accounts payable is just going to be brought down no change so i'm just going to say this equals that same number then the capital accounts will sum these up and I can use the sum function even though it's a subtraction problem. So it's 93,000 minus the 105. If I sum this problem, however, it's going to take this as a positive, that's a negative, so it's going to subtract the two. So I can still use the equals sum, double click the sum, highlight, and note it actually went to a negative number because of course the you know it went from down to zero and then in the negative direction so that's a problem for k here their capital account went into a negative that's not good and then we'll sum up c's equals the sum brackets these two enter and then m equals the sum double click highlight these two so that's the 106, 000, uh, 167,000 minus 35,000 gives us 132,000. Okay, so th then we're gonna have the payback. Now this is the thing that's kind of usual, unusual here, the new thing here, and that is that Kay's account has a negative balance. So someone has to go to this partner and say, hey, you know what, we sold the inventory for way less than it's on the books for, resulting in this big loss of you know 210,000 and that brought your capital account from a positive balance down to you owing the partnership 12,000 within the liquidation process. Hopefully, <laughs> we can get this partner to pay us within the liquidation process, pay the partnership, and then we can allocate the payment in accordance with the profit sharing agreement. But um, that doesn't always, ha I mean, within a liquidation process, it, you know, might be difficult to get payments sometimes because we're trying to liquidate the process. And this problem will show the payment and then the next one will show what would happen if we couldn't you know get a payment from this partner as the liquidation process happened so now we're going to go to we're going to say that k is paying the partnership which is good that's what should happen so it's good good of him so we're going to say twelve thousand is going to go up for cash and then his capital account is going to go down by the twelve thousand so now now we're going to sum these up so we got the 502 500 K just paid us on the partnership 12,000. So if we sum them up equals the SUM, double click the sum, highlight those two cells, we're now at cash of 514,500. Inventory is still zero, I'll just leave that zero. Accounts payable is still 240, so I'm just gonna say equals that 240. Then uh, the K's capital will sum these up. So I'm gonna say equals SUM, Double click the sum and highlight those two. So the negative 12,000 and positive 12,000 equals zero. And so now K's capital account is at zero, which is good. And then we're gonna say this equals the 142,500 tab. And then M's uh, equals the 132,000 and enter. 
So we still have the, the assets of now 514,500 equaling the liabilities plus the equity uh, 514,500. Now we need to get rid of the accounts payable account. So accounts payable is on the books for 240, that's a liability. We want to pay off the liabilities before allocating money to the partnerships, to the partners from the partnership. So we're going to pay out 240. So uh, we're going to be here, we're going to say negative 240,000, tab, tab, within E52, negative 240,000. No effect on the capital accounts. Now we'll just sum this up again. We were at a balance of 514,500 in cash. We just paid out 240,000. We will use the sum function, which will actually be a subtraction problem because it's going to sum up a positive and negative number. So this will be equals SUM. Double click the sum function, highlight those two numbers, and that comes out to 274,500. We'll do the same thing here in E53 equals SUM. Double click the sum function, highlight those two numbers, and that comes out to zero. And then the capital accounts, we'll just bring down the balance. So in G53 equals that number, and then in H53 equals that number, and enter. Okay, and then we can just distribute. So now we've got cash of 274,500, and C and M's capital accounts at 142.5 and 3132 thousand respectively and we can just pay that out now last step so we're going to pay out 274,500 to C's 142,500 and M 132,000 and now we can just uh, sum these up in the final amount so we're just going to sum these up and it'll sum back to zero because this is a positive and that's a negative so we're going to say equals SUM sum those two and tab and we'll do the same here equals sum and we'll sum those two tab one more time equals sum summing those two and tab and now we're at all zeros here so that's that's our goal we're gonna do the same thing now in in a journal entry format and we'll get to see the trial balance and this is something we often see the problems in this um, table format with book problems and in, in practice as well but when we actually record it and uh, it, it's we have to do that with a journal entry and it's really good practice to see it in journal entries for me it's easier to do uh, in a journal entry format so if you work with a lot of journal entries it makes sense to actually see the trial balance and then you can see what you're going to do uh, in the format so liquidation problems are really good practice for that so we have a pretty simple trial balance here, but we try to give some of all the accounts so we can see how this would work. So we've got cash as an asset, we've got inventory, we've got the accounts payable, our only liability. We've got the capital accounts. This is reflecting our beginning balances here on the table. And so we know that the debits are non-bracketed numbers and the credits are bracketed numbers. So if we add them up, they add up to zero. Okay, so now we're just going to go through our same steps. We're going to uh, sell the inventory, the assets, then we're going to pay off the liability, and then we're going to allocate uh, to the partners at the last step. Note that there's nothing in revenue and expenses. It's important to note that we had closed out, we must have closed out the, uh, the income statement. So, so we have a post-closing trial balance in essence here, only balance sheet accounts. Uh, when we do this process because that means that this side assets minus liabilities 472,500 equals this side equity 472,500 and we can just close this thing out to the capital accounts. So first we're going to sell the inventory. So inventory is on the books for 530,000 and we're going to sell it. We're going to get cash. So we're only going to get however uh, 320,000 even though it's on the books for 530. So we're going to get cash. Cash is a debit balance account. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it. Another debit. So we'll copy the cash. We'll put that on top in J42. Right click and paste. One, two, three. The amount will be that 320,000. Then we're going to credit the inventory. Inventory is an asset account. We need to make it go down. So we're going to do the opposite thing to it. In this case, a credit. So we'll copy the inventory. Right click and copy. We're going to put that in cell J47, right click and paste. 
one, two, three. I'm going to indent that as we go. So I'm going to go up to the top, Home tab, Alignment, Increase, Indenting. And then the credit side of this is going to be whatever's in there, 530,000. So we're going to credit 530,000 to make it go down to zero. The difference then will be the gain or loss on sale. That's going to be our income statement account. So note where that is down here. It's on the income statement. Note on our table that we just allocated it directly to the capital accounts on the table. But here we're going to do a two-step process and make this sale as if it would typically be uh, when we sell inventory, we're going to record the gain or loss on the income statement, then we'll close it out to the capital accounts. So this is going to be a loss, so we're going to copy the gain or loss on the income statement, put that in J48, right click and paste, one, two, three. If we take the 530 minus the 320, we get the 210. That's going to be a debit because the debits are what is needed to be in balance here. We're going to do this with the plug formula, the negative sum formula. So we'll say negative SUM, double click the sum function and highlight those four cells. And there we have it, 210,000. So no, I, I put the, this on the bottom, even though it's a, even though it's a debit. So we could reverse the order, but the structure of this makes the most sense to me to go back and look at what has been done. So I'm going to keep it there in this format, therefore. So let's post this out then. We're gonna say the cash is up top. Here's the cash on the journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance. We're gonna post it to the entries column where we will say equals and scroll to the left and point to that uh, 320, bringing the 182,500 up by 322, 502,500. Then we're gonna to go to the inventory. Inventory is here on the trial balance. We're going to be in P47 and say equals, point to the 530,000, bring the balance from 530 down by 532, zero. And then we have the gain, so or the loss in this case, loss. Here's the gain or loss. A debit's going to be a loss because it's kind of like a like an expense, a debit and expense rather than revenue being a credit. So we're going to say equals and point to that 210, bringing the balance up from zero by 210 to 210. So now we have this 210 on the income statement and we said before that we need to kind of close out the income statement. So that's what we will do now. We'll take this this gain, this $210,000 gain, we will allocate it to the capital accounts. So we're going to copy this. I'm going to copy the gain and I'm going to try to put it on the bottom. I'll try to keep it in the right format this time. So there's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the gain's going to be underneath. So, or the loss. So right click and paste, I'm on cell J53. That should give us enough room if we're down here on J53. Then I'm gonna to go to the Home tab, Alignment, Increase in Denting, and we're gonna credit that cell in L53, negative 210,000. Then we'll debit uh, the three capital accounts. So we'll, we'll highlight the three capital accounts copy those, right click and copy. Let's do that again, I'm not sure exactly what happened. Copy, <laughs> and then we'll put that up top here in J50, right click and paste, one, two, three. All right, so now we're gonna take that 210, we're gonna allocate it in accordance with their profit sharing uh, ratios, which I'm gonna pull from over here. And the reason we have to is because if we just type in 0.33, it's not going to come out to the right number again. We have to use this cell because it's really one third. So we're going to we're going to be in cell K uh, in cell K 50 for K's capital and say that this equals a negative to flip the sign of this number times that 50 percent. And we should get the same uh, 105,000 that we got on the table. We'll do the same thing again here. I'm going to say negative of this number times C's percent equals, enter, equals negative 210,000 times M's percent and enter. So now if we add these up, if we highlight these, it should add up to 210, which is the same as the credit. If we highlight the whole thing, it adds up to zero. So it, it works, it's in balance, we're gonna post it then. 
So here's the capital account, K's capital account. We're gonna post it here in P49. We will say equals, point to the 105,000 and enter, bringing the balance, flipping it from a credit balance of 93,000 to a debit of 12,000. That's where the problem lies in this problem is the fact that it flipped to this, this debit balance of 12,000. Then we've got the C capital, 70,000. We're gonna post here in P50 equals that 70,000, bringing the balance from 212,500 down by 72,142,500. Do then C's capital is gonna go here. So we're in P51 where we say equals and point to the 35,000. So we've got the 167,000 is gonna go down by 35,000 to 132,000. And then we've got the gain, which is gonna go down here. There's already something in that cell. So we're gonna double click on it, go to the end after the eight and say plus and point it to that 210. That'll bring the balance down. Once we hit enter, bring us back in balance and bring the net income back to zero. So there we have that. Okay, so so we've we've now allocated uh, that. Now we've got this loss that we have to deal with. That's going to be the next step. Um, so again, with we have to go to the capital account for K and say, hey, you know that we sold it for a, there was a loss on the sale, and your capital account went from a positive capital account to a negative capital account, meaning you owe the partnership money within the liquidation process. Would you please pay the partnership? And if they do then that's great. So then we can say cash is gonna go up by the 12,000 that's owed by K partner within this liquidation process. So we're gonna copy, right click and copy cash. Put that down here in J55, right click and paste, one, two, three. The amount's gonna be for that 12,000. We're gonna credit the 12,000 as well. I'm gonna put a negative of that number and then uh, we'll take that from the capital account. So in N49, right click and copy. And we'll put that down here in J56, right click and paste one, two, three. Then we're gonna go to the home tab, alignment, increase the indenting, and there we have it. So now we can post this. So here's the cash here. Here's the cash up top. We wanna be in the middle, so we're in P46. There's something in that cell, therefore we'll double click on it, go to the end of it, and say plus, and then point to that 12,000, bringing the balance up from 502,500 to uh, 514,500. And then we've got the capital account here. Here's the capital account on the trial balance. We're gonna be in the middle in P49. Double click, go to the end of it, plus, and then point to that 12,000, bringing the balance down to zero. So now the balance is at zero and we only have these other two capital accounts, but we still have to pay off the liability, the payable. That'll be our next step. So we wanna pay off uh, the payable, we're gonna pay it with cash. So cash is gonna go down, cash is a debit balance, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, a credit. So we'll copy cell N46, right click and copy. I'm gonna skip a cell, uh, skip another one, put it on the bottom in J59, right click and paste, one, two, three. Then we're gonna to go to the home tab, alignment, increase the indenting, and uh, the amount's gonna be for this 240,000. So we're gonna pay cash of a credit to 240,000. Then we're gonna debit something, 240, I'm gonna say negative of that number, flipping the sign and that's gonna to go to the accounts payable. So accounts payable is gonna go down to zero. So in N48, right click and copy. We're gonna put that in J58, right click and paste, one, two, three. And then we'll just post this out. So here's, P, here's the accounts payable. We're gonna post that here to the trial balance in P48. So within P48, we will say equals point to that 240,000, bringing the balance down to zero. And then cash is up top, so we gotta scroll up just a little to P46, something is in it, so we will double click on it, go to the end of it, and say plus, and then scroll down just a bit and pick up that cash number and enter. So now we're back in balance down here. Now we're just left with the cash and the capital accounts. And it's nice to see it this way because we can just say, okay, cash is 247. If we highlight these two, it's uh, 274. It's 274,500. 
they're equal. Therefore, we can just pay the cash out and pay it to the two uh, owners, the two capital accounts. Note that these capital accounts are not going to represent almost never the profit sharing percentages because these are just the, the percentage of sharing profits and doesn't necessarily uh, almost never correlates to how much was invested throughout the entire life of the partnership and the amount drawn out. Those two don't have to be in alignment with the uh, partnership percentages unless stated within the partnership agreement. So m most of the time, the capital accounts will not equal those percentages. Okay, so then we're just gonna pay this off. So we're gonna say cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go down, doing the opposite thing to it. So we'll copy this and it's gonna go underneath again. So there's two capital accounts and it's gonna be in the bottom because we're gonna credit it. So we'll try to be in proper format here. So we are in J53, J63, right click and paste, one, two, three. Then I'm gonna go up top, home tab, alignment, increase in denting. And then we're in cell L63, the amount being credit of 274,500. Uh, note, if, if you wanted to try to like put a reference like a negative of that number, uh, you can't do it there because you'll have a circle reference once we post it because we're going to post it here, which is going to change that number, which we would have used down here. So just be aware that uh, formulas would be best whenever possible, but every once in a while, the most common problem will be a, like a circle reference like that. And um, so just be aware of that when, it, when that happens. So then we're going to have the C capital and M capital. We're just going to copy those, right click and copy. Put those up top. We're in cell J61. Right click and paste. One, two, three. And then again, we're not using the profit sharing percentages. We're just pulling whatever is in the capital account here. So we're just paying whatever's owed. This basically represents what's owed. It's at a book value now because we only have cash. It wasn't at a book value before because we had inventory. Uh, which could possibly have a different value than it's on the books or so now we're gonna pay this off at 142,500 and 132,000 and if we add those two up it adds up to zero if we add them all up and we can post this then so here's the C capital here's C capital up top we want to be in P50 where we will say double click go to the end of it plus and then point to that 142,500 bringing the balance down to zero. And then here's M's capital. Here's M's capital. We're gonna to go to the middle, double click on it, go to the end of it, plus, and then point to that 132,000, bringing the balance down to zero. And then we've got the cash. Cash will be up top, so we'll have to scroll up just a bit. We're gonna be here in P46, double click on it, go to the end of it, plus, and then we'll scroll down just a bit and we're picking up that cash amount and that should bring us back in balance and bring cash up so there we have it now we're at all zeros and we've liquidated uh, the partnership